Good day, learners. Welcome to our day one. Describing changes in the position of an object. Roll or stay. Where is the ball? Where is the ball now? Where is the toy car? Where is the toy car now? Today, we will learn how to describe the changes in the position of objects so we can explain where things are and how they move. What is a position? Position, the location of an object at a certain time. What is a change in position? Change in position, when an object moves from one place to another. What is a reference point? Reference points, objects or people that stay in place and help us describe where something is. Ways to describe position changes. Using words, the ball moved from under the table to on top of the chair. Using drawings or diagrams. In relation to yourself, the book is now closer to me than before. In relation to other objects, the cup is to the left of the plate now. Mia and her toy robot. Mia loves playing with her toy robot. She placed it on the living room table. Later, she moved it to the bookshelf. Mia noticed the robot was higher than before. It was also closer to the window. She drew a picture to show where the robot was first and where it is now. Where was Mia's toy robot at first? Where did Mia move the robot? How can we describe the robot's position compared to before? What can we use to describe the position of objects? Why is it important to know how to describe changes in position? Always remember, Position tells us where an object is. A change in position shows movement. We can describe movement in relation to other objects, reference points, or ourselves. Let's try this. Draw an arrow to show the change in position. Example, the ball moves from under the table to on top of the table. Welcome to our day two. Describing change in the position of an object using non-standard units. Lara and the Rolling Ball 
One afternoon, Lara and her brother played in the living room. Lara rolled her red ball from the couch. It stopped near the window. Lara wanted to know how far the ball moved. She didn't have a ruler, so she used her handspan. She placed her hand from the starting point to the ball's new position and counted one, two, three, four, five. The ball rolled five hand spans away, Lara proudly said. Her brother tried it using his foot span and counted only three. They both laughed and learned that different non-standard units give different numbers, but they still show how far something moved. What object did Lara use to measure how far the ball rolled? How many hands span? Did Lara count? What did her brother use instead of handspan? Did they get the same measurement? Why or why not? What did Lara and her brother learn from their activity? What is a non-standard unit? A non-standard unit is a way to measure something without using regular measuring tools like rulers, meter sticks, or measuring tapes. Instead, we use objects or parts of our body to measure. Examples of non-standard units Handspan The distance from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your little finger when your hand is stretched out. Footspan The length of your foot. We can describe how far an object moves by measuring its change in position. Measure the movement. Welcome to our day three. Describing change in the position of an object using simple measuring tools. Which one is longer? How can we know exactly which is longer? Yesterday, we learned how to describe the change in position using non-standard units like hand span or foot span. Today, we will use simple measuring tools such as Ruler, used to measure small objects in centimeters or inches. Measuring tape, used to measure longer objects or distances. When an object moves, we can measure how far it moved using these tools. We call that the change in position. Let's try this. Write true if the statement is correct and false if it's not.
move and measure. Welcome to our day four. Push and pull, how force affects movement. The tug of war game. During recess, the students played tug of war. At first, both teams pulled the rope gently and it didn't move much. Then, Team A pulled harder, and the rope moved to their side. When Team B pulled with all their strength, the rope moved to the other way. They realized that the stronger the pull, the greater the movement of the rope. What game did the children play? What happened when both teams pulled gently? What happened when Team A pulled harder? What caused the rope to move? What lesson can we learn from the story about the strength of a pool? The strength of a push or pool affects how much an object moves. A push moves an object away from you. A pull moves an object closer to you. When we use different strengths, a gentle push or pull moves the object a little. A strong push or pull moves the object farther or faster. The stronger the push or pull, the greater the change in the position of an object. A small force makes a small movement, but a strong force makes a big movement. Let's try this. Read each question carefully. Choose the correct answer. When you push a swing harder, what will happen? Anna gently pushed her toy car. It moved a little. Then she pushed it harder. What do you think happened? What happens when you pull a rope strongly? Which of the following shows a strong push? The strength of a push or pull affects how an object moves. Which statement is correct? Let's try this. Write true if the statement is correct and false if it's not. Thank you for watching. Till our next science lesson. Goodbye.